Right, hello, welcome back to another Villa on Tour video. Today I'm going to do a season review because as you know we are at the halfway point of the season. Well, pretty much after the Leeds game but I can't film after there because it's Christmas. So let me off. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to talk about a few things including the summer signings, the transition between Bruce and Smith and just summing up the season so far to be fair. Just before we do get into this video, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, it really does help me out. We are trying to hit 6,000 subscribers before the end of the year. It's going to be really close, so any support would be greatly appreciated. Right, so you may remember at the start of the season, I did a video regarding where, what I think will happen this season. And here's a little clip from that. I just think it's going to be like the season we first came down, 2016-17. It's just going to be a hit and miss season where we come mid-table. I'm going to say 11th for this season. I think we're just going to get into the upper regions of the table. Um, but I just don't see it happening. As I've said, we've lost the spine of our team. And signings don't look like they're going to happen at the moment. But it can all change very quickly. As I've said, the Championship is such a hard league to predict we just don't know what's going to happen. And I'd love to be proved wrong. I'd love to get playoffs. Playoffs would be fantastic this season. But I just don't see it happening. So as you can see from that short clip, I don't think expectations were too high back at the start of the season. So to see where we are now, it's probably a positive. I did say back then that playoffs would be a success. And I still feel that. Although I do think... We do have the potential to push on to the top two, but again, playoffs, I'd probably still take it now if you offered it to me. In terms of the signings we made in the summer, I think we made seven, and they range in terms of success. I think you look at Marrera, who is probably the most pointless signing in Villa history. Uh, Nyland, who's divided opinion and has made a, his fair share of mistakes this season. But then at the other end of the spectrum, you look at McGinn, who has been phenomenal this season, runs his socks off in every single game, has scored a few screamers. And, you know, El Ghazi's coming into his own, Balassi as well. Abraham is exactly what we needed um, in terms of strike force. I think he scored 12 goals this season. And I think he's up there with the top scorers and especially scoring four goals in that Forest game in just one game. It's, it's just a joke. I think he, had, he, he does have the tendency to miss big chances. You look at the West Brom game. But overall, I think you can't complain. He's one of the best strikers in this league. Talking of Nyland, uh, Greg Evans from the Birmingham Mail put out a tweet yesterday which said we are close to signing Lovre Kalinic, uh, a goalkeeper you may remember three years ago we tried to sign, but there was issues with like a work permit or something like that, so it didn't come off. So it's a bit weird that three years later it's coming up again. And there's rumours coming from Greg Evans, John Percy, people like this. Uh, that he's coming to the training ground on Thursday. He's going to be in Birmingham and a, a deal is going to be finalised for a region or in the region of around £7 million. So I think a lot of people are getting what they wish for in terms of Nyland not being the number one anymore and I don't think I'm complaining as well because Nyland just doesn't fill anyone with confidence in terms of the fans and the players. And Kalinic being six foot seven, which is very tall and I think he's Croatia's number one. So... He can't be that bad. Just quickly, what I do think we need to do in January, I'd be, I'd be buzzing with a goalkeeper, getting Kalinic in would be class. Maybe a cover at left back because Taylor's injured at the moment and you've seen the issues we've got. Hutton, he's made a few mistakes in the last few games. And maybe cover at centre-back as well. I don't think getting a first-team centre-back is a good idea because Transavi and Chester have been very good this season so I think cover at left back, a goalkeeper, that's all we need to do really. I put out a few questions on Twitter asking you guys what your opinions are in terms of the summer signings, uh, the transition between Bruce and Smith, where you think we'll finish and all these things so we'll look at them, see what you guys think. I think Jack makes a good point here in saying uh, get cover in defence and maybe sort out a goalkeeper, he doesn't see why we can't finish in the top two. I think that's a very good point. That's basically what I've been saying. If we sort out the back line, sort out that defence, I think we'll be absolutely fine. Because offensively this season, we've scored so many goals. I think the second most in the in the league after West Brom. So going forward, I don't think there's any issues. It's just sort out that defence and we can push up the table. In terms of the Bruce to Smith transition, Luke comes up with a good point and says, Smith has put the boost back in the side that was 100% needed and the fans are back on side and obviously the ticket sales don't disappoint. The players are performing well, new and old, and there's not a game where he doesn't feel there's not an attacking threat and he thinks we should push for the top two. I think that's a good point. As I've said, going forward, I don't think there's any issues whatsoever. 
just sort out that defence and I think top two is definitely possible. James Rushton comes here and says we will finish first, no mercy. Uh, <laughs> All right, James, fair play to you, mate. I don't think that's going to happen, but we can dream. Right, so we've talked about the summer signings. Now I'm going to move on to what happened in October with Bruce being sacked and us hiring Dean Smith. In terms of Bruce, I just think it was getting so toxic around the club. You look at Sheffield United away, a lot of other away games. You look at Blackburn. A lot of these games, people were chanting, we want Brucey out and you don't know what you're doing, things like that. And I just think... You could see it was going to happen. It was a matter of time because things just weren't going our way and it was becoming toxic. The fans were turning, both home and away fans. And once the away fans turn, you know you've got an issue in terms of the manager. And I think, if anything, it happened slightly too late. I think I turned when Sheffield Wednesday beat us at Villa Park 2-1. I think that was the final straw for me. But he eventually went after the Preston 3-3. I didn't do a video on that because I was busy. So it's slightly unfortunate because... Well, it's slightly fortunate, you could say, because I was so angry. I mean, I think we were 2-0 up. And in the second half, they went 3-2 up. And I've never been so angry. We equalised with Balassi in the 90th minute. And I didn't even celebrate because being 2-0 up at home to Preston and getting a 3-3 draw. What is there to celebrate there? And then to top it all off, Whelan missed a penalty. <laughs> Which was just so funny. Um, I think it's funny because Whelan got him sacked, basically. He was the final nail in the coffin that said, bye-bye, Bruce. And I think no one can complain because what we've seen since then, fair play, Dean Smith, mate. Legend. In terms of Bruce as well, I think his comments were just ridiculous. Having to go at fans saying, oh, who else can do a better job than me? It's just so arrogant. And I think he seemed tactically inept as well. Like, before the game, it was just the same old repetitive thing he was saying after game as well. And you compare that to Dean Smith, where after games, he comes out with things that I've never heard of. Like, the geezer's talking about tactics that I've got no idea. So, he definitely comes across, Smith this is, that he knows what he's doing so much more than Bruce. And I think 18 months of Bruce... And it's just the same old, same old. So it was it was in need of freshening up in terms of the manager's role. And you can't complain with Dean Smith coming in because so far he's turned our season around. I think the Villa media team were hyping up the style of play that Smith has brought to the Villa uh, when he came in. And I think we won our first game 1-0 with Swansea, which wasn't the most incredible affair, but we got the three points in the end. But after that, we lost two on the bounce away games at Norwich and QPR. But I don't think anyone was too disheartened whatsoever because in both those games, especially at the start of the Norwich game and throughout the whole of the QPR game, there was there were signs that he was he was implementing something. And it was it was that was only in his first three games. So it gave us hope about what could happen. And we've stuck with it and fair play. You look at some of the away games, you look at Derby away, which was one of the best away games this season. You look at Middlesbrough away and Smith, before he came to the Villa, he hadn't won an away game with Brentford all season. So he's turned us around. And he just doesn't mess about. Like, during the game, you score one, he wants two. You score two, he wants three. He just doesn't stop. And I think that's such a contrast to Bruce, where it's like, oh, you go 1-0 up, defend, defend, defend. So it's a breath of fresh air down the villa, and I love it. Fair play, Dean Smith. Overall, for me, I don't think there's any regrets whatsoever in terms of the Bruce sacking. If anything, it came too late. But you can't complain. we just got to focus on the here and now with Dean Smith and the project that he's trying to implement. We've got to give him time. We've got to give him resources. And I think, is he the man to lead us back to the Premier League? The way we're playing now, I'd say yes, but time will tell. Right, so as we are at the halfway point of the season, I'm going to talk about the best goal of the season so far and the best game of the season so far. The best goal of the season so far, I think there's no competition. John McGinn against Sheffield Wednesday. What an absolute screamer that was. No one's there. Although we did lose that game, uh, no one needs to know about that, but yeah, what a goal that is, what a screamer. 
best game of the season, I think you could say Forest 5-5. That's, that's a choice, but for me, it's got to be the Blues game 4-2 at home. I think the fact they went 1-0 up set off like so many smoke bombs. They were just giving it large. And then Codger and Grealish pipe up with two goals in like two minutes to send Villa Park absolutely mental. Twelve seconds later. And then Abraham just after half time to make it 3 1. Yeah, they got a consolation goal, but that, that doesn't matter. Alan Hutton, what a ridiculous goal, mate. He runs through about half their team, slots it bottom corner, and I, I've never been in scenes like that at Villa Park. <laughs> The place went absolutely mental and Alan Hutton, you can just tell mate, he loves the Villa. He loved that goal and it was just embarrassing for them. All them leaving at the end was just funny and 4-2 against your biggest rivals, can't complain. In terms of where we're going to finish this season, I think it's a tough one to predict. I think there's a lot of decent teams up there. You look at Leeds, you look at Norwich who I think will fall away eventually but they're doing well at the moment. Sheffield United, West Brom. There's a lot of good teams up there, but I think we can challenge all of them. And I think Leeds on Sunday will be a massive test. At the start of the season, I did say 11th. Mid-table, I'm going to say 11th for this season. I think we can definitely, definitely improve on that now. I think playoffs, I'd probably say is the minimum. I think a lot of people on Twitter were saying top two is where they think we could get, but I think people would take playoffs uh, in terms of what happened in the summer. I think playoffs would be... Okay, I'll take it. I'll tell you what though, if we do get playoffs, I cannot be dealing with a loss at Wembley again. I just, I just can't. But we've got to think positive. Dean Smith, he's going to take us up. You can't mess about, mate. He's going to take us to the Premier League. We're going to win everything. Love it. Right, that is the end of the video. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments section about what you think of the season so far and where you think it will finish. As I said, we are trying to hit 6,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so please do subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Up the Villa.